Good morning boys and girls and welcome to another video. Welcome to sunny Spain. Hot and sticky sunny Spain. I do not have low fuel because I just put some in that biatch. Oh please don't die on me. Oh thank god. It's always a uh, heart wrenching situation when your motorbike goes ah, ah, ah. Oh okay I'll start it's fine. Please accept my apologies for the uh, pretty epic helmet hair that we have going on at the moment. I have curly hair and it is very hot and sticky. I do apologise. It's just the bane of my existence. It's just f***ed up hair after being in a helmet when it's been hot. Also, it's a little bit echo in here because I'm under a bridge. Check this shit out, like... 100% sure there's going to be a whole butt fuckery of snakes living in those. Yeah, not going near those at all. Well, one of the things I think a lot of people actually don't think about when they're gonna buy a bike or when they're choosing what bike to buy is engine type and like engine configuration. I think a lot of people just go based off like what the bike looks like or if it's a naked bike or a super sport bike or something like that. Let's wait for this car to fuck off. Thank you very much. A lot of people I think don't actually think like, okay, well, is this like a V-twin or is it an inline four? You know, what do I want out of my engine? What kind of characteristics do I want out of my engine? Because every single engine configuration is different and have really like distinct characteristics. So I've banged on about this before. V twins, like you'll see up in there. So they are essentially two cylinders, the cylinder one and cylinder two that are horizontal, sort of horizontally opposed to each other in a V shape, hence V twin, another van. I picked a bad place here. He was nice though, he went all the way on the other side of the road. Top bloke. Top bloke! With the V-Twin you get several characteristics that I personally absolutely love and that's one of the reasons why I wanted one and one of the reasons why I wanted a, a big V-Twin like this. So number one is that it has a shitload of torque. Torque for me is one of the things that make this bike so bloody awesome because you can just power through, there's no real power band like you have on an inline fork, which I'll go into. Essentially you don't have a power band, you don't have to hold on to the throttle to get the power out of it. But one of the things you lose out on is top end speed, right? So this is a 1200cc engine bike and it has a lot less horsepower than something like an R1 which is a 999cc bike but will have like just under 200 or I think the R1M has just over 200 horsepower. For those who don't know, horsepower is how fast you hit the wall. Torque is how far you take the wall with you after you hit it. But I didn't want high end speed. I wanted something that, I mean this will easily do 180 miles an hour, right? If you hold on to it for long enough, easily. But um, you know, I didn't want the ability to go really, really, really fast. I wanted to have the characteristics of acceleration on the road, fun factor, acceleration, that kind of stuff. And that is what this kind of an engine configuration brings. So in terms of your V-twins, you're looking at your Panigales, your Ducatis, most of them, except the V4 are V-twins. Super Duke, the 1290 Super Duke R, the SV650, the SV1000 by Suzuki, those are also V-twin motorbikes. And they're a very charismatic engine. Downside of them, besides the top speed situation, is they're quite vibey. That's a cool car. Is that they're quite vibey, they're not exactly the smoothest of bikes, but they have a lot of character and I wanted that out of this. And I wanted that out of my bike, so that's why it was a consideration why I bought one. Fun fact, the police just turned up and told me to kindly move along. You're not meant to be here. Sounds like Borat. Please leave. Again, Borat. No more bien. Tell you what, it was kind of nice to sit in the shade for a bit though, I'm not going to lie. So what are the different engines that you can get on bikes? Well, you can get an inline four, which is like your typical 600cc motorbikes or 1000s, excluding the R1, which is an inline four, but it's a slightly different kind of engine. So you have your Kawasaki ZX-10s, your ZX-6R Ninjas R6s, Honda Fireblades, Honda 600 double R's, those are all inline four bikes. You also get them in a naked form like the Phaser 600s, the Phaser 1000s, the XJ6s of the world. Those are all inline four motorbikes and they basically have a lot less down low power. But then they make up for that in top end horsepower. So that's why you'll see them on race bikes and things like that because they go fast. They're meant to go fast. 
they're also seriously smooth because there's four cylinders in the engine in a row they're really really smooth you're not going to get the kind of lumpiness or vibrations really like you'll get on a big v-twin like the rca let's hit some of these corners Now personally, I absolutely loved my ZX6R. It was such a fantastic bike. I loved that bike. If I could still have the ZX6 and bought something like this, I would have done that. But it was too smooth for me. I didn't feel really so connected to the bike. Uh, I didn't feel like I was doing the thing to make it go. I felt like I was just twisting the throttle and it would just do its thing. And I think that's a lot of, a lot of complaints people have had about inline fours in particular when they're too good, if there is such a thing, when they're too good. And an example of that would be the S1000RR. You know, a lot of people love that bike, but a lot of people say it's too good, it's too bore, it, it's just boring. The bike rides me, I don't ride the bike. I think people are a bit spoiled by the, the high-end inline fours, you know. They're kind of like, oh, they're, they're just so good. And people just kind of buy them, they're really expensive. And they're fantastic race bikes, they win, they win competitions. But as a road bike, I don't know, man. It, there's something about them that kind of like lacks, I would say. Lacks intrigue for me. Hey, sexy boy, how you doing? Don't get me wrong, I do love the NI4s. I would definitely have one as a race bike because it would kick the pants off the RC8 on a big circuit, absolutely. One of my personal favorites is the, the current parallel twin engines that the, you'll see on a lot of the Triumph bikes at the moment. Sort of the new retro, such as the, uh, the Thruxtons and the Bonnevilles the street twins and the speed twins they all use a parallel twin engine and uh, parallel twins are kind of um, similar in terms of torque to a v-twin like this there's our favorite factory the virgin of las nievas there we go you must be sweaty as fuck my dude watch out for reindeer apparently santa claus is around here so the Parallel Twin is, is a great engine because it offers similar characteristics as a Torquey V-Twin but a lot more smoothness. You're not going to get like the kind of do, 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 charismatic that you do on a V-Twin. It's going to feel smooth. You're not going to feel a lot of vibration. It's, it's nice. Basically a Parallel Twin is a two-cylinder motorbike where there's two cylinders horizontally next to each other. They're in parallel, right? fantastic engine but what they do lose out on is horsepower again you'll have a lot of smoothness but you'll get nowhere near the amount of torque and power as you would on a v-twin they make really good uh, adventure bikes or on the new modern sort of classic motorbikes because it just it's just a good engine for an all-round kind of uh, rider I would say this fat dude checking out the bike. Other types of engines you have are big single cylinders which have, you know, not they are not suitable for uh, long distance riding or highway speeds but they are so much fun at low end because they have a lot of torque, a lot of punch. That's why you'll see them on like, on a lot of supermotos, on a lot of dirt bikes. The inline three cylinder engine, also known as the triple, made uh, by Triumph at the moment pretty much exclusively besides Yamaha. Yamaha has a triple, C a triple cylinder engine on the MT-09. The MT-09 has essentially the same engine in terms of cylinders as a Triumph. Not a lot of people know that. So a triple cylinder engine is a really great all-round engine. Not only do they sound fucking tits, what is that mate? Pretty much unbeaten mid-range power. They have a lot of mid-range torques. That's why people love the triple cylinder motorbikes. But they also are super smooth and have a decent top end, similarly to that of an inline four. One final one to note would be obviously the V4, which is very similar in terms of charismatics, in terms of low end torque than the V-twin, but they have a huge top end and a really nice power band throughout. That's why I think most manufacturers now are going to V4s for their MotoGP bikes because it's just the best racing engine you can get and that's why V4 bikes are typically freaking expensive. And here endeth the lesson on engine configuration.
Praise be to the V4 gods. Obviously, the other thing is reliability. You know, how reliable are the bikes? Go on the forum, see what people are saying about them, see what the dealers are saying, see what the manufacturers are saying about them. Have they had any recalls? KTM get a really bad rep of being really unreliable, but it's just with this particular model, it's not the case. They do have some interesting quirks, like, and there are some things you need to watch out for, but that's no different than any other bike. What is bulletproof though on this bike is the engine. This is the LC8 engine, which is the same one that they used on the 990 Super Duke and the 990 Adventure, 990 Supermoto, the 990 SM, SMR, I believe it is. It's the same engine and it's just been timelessly bulletproof. It's pretty rudimental. There's not too much fancy shit going on. Um, and it's just a really, really strong engine that just doesn't really go wrong. What does go wrong on these bikes quite regularly actually is the clutch. There's a spring in there, that, a bolt and a spring set in there that you need to keep an eye on. Otherwise it has a tendency of actually smashing, coming loose and smashing out through the uh, clutch casing, which obviously is not muy bien. Um, other issues I've had on this, Besides a bit of a squeaky rear brake, which I should sort out with some copper grease, is obviously the front forks, um, the right front right hand fork started leaking. If the battery is a little bit low, it may not start, but that's just because it's such a high compression bike. So you should really consider like, you know, look at a particular bike, think about like what issues do they have? Can I afford to deal with them? that kind of stuff because budget is a lot of this consideration for people anyway guys i hope you found this super useful thank you so much for watching as always ride safe and i'll see you in the next video ciao